Welcome back to this series of tutorials by FlingOS. In this last tutorial, we'll be looking at the keyboard. Specifically, we will be implementing a PS2 keyboard driver. Don't worry if you only have a USB keyboard. Virtual machines and real hardware both emulate PS2 keyboards without the need for any configuration. Our keyboard driver will include receiving keystrokes from the keyboard and outputting characters to the screen using the print function we created in the last tutorial. In previous tutorials, we have looked at I.O. ports, outputting text to the screen, interrupts, and using C or C Sharp to write our kernel. All of these will be important in this tutorial. There will be no new assembly code in this tutorial. Everything will be in C or C Sharp. This is primarily because writing a PS2 keyboard driver in assembly code is extremely laborious. Let's start by looking at keyboard hardware. This diagram gives us a view of how the keys of a keyboard are translated into electronic signals. Please note this schematic is for a TI99-4A keyboard, but the basic principles explained from it are sufficient for our understanding. The rows and columns are linked such that pressing a particular key creates a unique 16-bit value that identifies the key pressed. We can also see how the alpha lock, otherwise known as caps lock, key hooks in to produce a constant on or off signal that will change the value for every key pressed. This allows the distinction between upper and lowercase key presses. So the hardware generates unique numbers. These unique numbers are called scan codes, and there are three standards for which scan codes, i.e. numbers, correspond to which keys. Rather unimaginatively, the scan codes are just known by version number, set1, set2, and set3. Set1 is the most basic and supported by all hardware, even extremely old stuff. Set2 is the most widespread modern standard, which adds support for more keys than set1. Set3 is the latest but probably least supported set. We will be looking at set2. So the keyboard sends the computer scan codes. We use something called a key map which is in essence just an array, to translate scan codes into a key code, which represents the actual key which was pressed, combined with information such as whether the shift, function, or control keys were pressed at the same time. The keyboard sends us this information when a key is pressed down, released, or held down. The representation of the key codes in our kernel is entirely our decision. There are no requirements other than that it must be capable of representing all keys and all states of those keys. The final step for a keyboard driver is to translate key codes into characters which can be used by programs to, for example, output text to the screen. This last part uses key chars and character sets. Each key is assigned a character, which can be an empty character, and the driver decides on a character set. For our purposes, we will use the ASCII character set. So when a program wants to know what the user has typed, it can request one of three pieces of information. The scan code, the key code, or the key char, i.e. the key character. The last of these is what we will be able to print and what the user types to the screen. Now let's take a brief look at PS2 which is the keyboard standard we will be using. First off, as I said at the beginning, don't worry if you haven't got a PS2 connector or a PS2 keyboard. USB keyboards on real hardware and also on virtual machines are emulated to PS2 keyboards, so we can rely on there always being a PS2 keyboard. PS2 is formally written as PS2. Technically, PS2 is the PlayStation 2 trademark held by Sony. PS2 gets its name from IBM's Personal System 2 series of personal computers because they introduced the standard. PS2 is a serial, synchronous, bidirectional system. This means it just uses basic I.O. ports for communication. All communication is done synchronously, i.e. one command at a time, and you have to wait for a command to complete. And bidirectional means data is sent to and from the keyboard. As an example of data and commands sent to the keyboard, enabling or disabling the caps lock light is controlled by the OS, not the keyboard hardware. A PS2 keyboard is a relatively simple device to program for. 
There are the following basic components to any PS2 keyboard driver software. 1. Initialization. This step is very simple. It involves setting up the IRQ handler for IRQ1 and creating a key map. The key map at our level will be hard programmed into the code. There are a few other bits of initialization you can do if you're trying to support PS2 mouse as well, but we don't need to do that for now. 2. Interrupt handling. This step is the most interesting. We will be doing a very basic version of this step, but I will describe it fully now. A. Firstly, the interrupt handler has to be deferred. This means you flag the interrupt as having occurred, and then return from the handler immediately. Deferring the interrupt is necessary since the main handling of the interrupt will require memory allocation, which cannot be done inside an immediate interrupt handler, for reasons of synchronization and locking. B. Later, a separate thread notices the flag and starts to handle the interrupt properly. It first has to read the scan code byte from the keyboard. C. Next, using the scan code value, it can determine if the key was pressed or released, which is done by determining if the high bit is set. If it is, the key was released and the high bit should be cleared. D. Next, again using the scan code value, the driver can determine if the shift, control or alt keys were held down at the same time. E. Lastly, the scan code value is altered to distinguish between upper and lower case letters, determined by the shift or caps lock keys, and then queued in a buffer for a separate program to handle. The final big step in a keyboard driver is to provide methods for getting scan codes from the buffer and or converting them to key codes or key chars. Our driver will be somewhat simpler than this since we don't have the multi-threading support required to defer interrupts. Our driver will simply handle the interrupt immediately, read in the scan code in the handler, and then immediately print the corresponding character to the screen. We will, however, also support the backspace tab and enter keys. This sample consists of the static key map, the initialization function, and the interrupt handler. The initialization function uses the pick and interrupt functions produced in previous tutorials to add a handler for IRQ1, which is always the keyboard IRQ. The interrupt handler uses IO ports to read in the scan code from the PS2 data port and then uses the static key map to translate that into a character. It then just calls the print function developed in the previous tutorial. So what about backspace and tab keys? They are fairly simple to support. For the backspace key, we will simply set the key char and the key map to be the backspace character, which is backslash b. Using backslash before a character is known as escaping the character which follows. We will then add a short bit to our print function to detect the backspace character and just move back a place in video display memory, down to the minimum distance. For the tab key, we will detect the tab key and replace it by outputting four spaces instead of the tab character. That's the end of this series. We hope you've learned a lot and now have a basic working kernel. If you're wondering what to do next, please take a look at the FlingOS Getting Started and Typical Design Routes articles, which will help guide you. The Getting Started article carries on directly from this series. FlingOS contains lots of articles to help you implement kernel features and drivers. You can find all of them in our conceptual documentation section of our website. Goodbye and thanks for watching. We hope to see you soon on the community forums or perhaps even working on FlingOS itself.